Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a good week so far. Halfway through it, anyway. So, uh, I wanted to give a thank you to all my subscribers, uh, new and old. I appreciate you uh, jumping on board and watching my videos and hopefully interacting with me and commenting. Always love to see the interaction. I really do appreciate you guys and gals following me. Um, today's video, I wanted to discuss or continue discussing this radical government that we find ourselves with. And it's radical in so many different ways. And a lot of us, you know, saw this coming. Uh, we knew what they were all about. We warned everybody and tried to reason with people and explain that you're letting the wolf in the hen house and uh, the hatred for Trump was just so overwhelming that people, I guess, just can't see the forest for the trees. But having said that, things are becoming ever so more clear to me and a lot of other folks, um, especially down here in Texas. And this government is going to create probably irreversible long-term issues, if not permanent changes for this state. Barring secession or violence, um, it looks like Texas is probably on its way to becoming blue. And it pains me to say that. It really does. And I'll explain why. It's a numbers game, obviously. So we have, you know, endured COVID pretty well here. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job. Not perfect, of course. Um, the governor has, uh, he had a little hiccup initially with COVID and how he responded, but I think he's sort of gathered it all back together and uh, he's sort of uh, more in line with uh, a strong, vibrant economy and doing what it takes to try to keep people safe and also keep the economy rolling and keeping, you know, roof, roofs over people's heads and and allowing them to work at least and, you know, put food on the table. So I think Governor Abbott's done a pretty good job since COVID. Um, so I hope that he can continue to try to stand up to the feds and what they're doing to basically take over this state. So as many of you know, we have a pretty strong economy here and a lot of people have chosen to move here and start over or, or start anew, whatever you want to call it. And, and most of us here in Texas don't have a problem with that as long as you vote right. And don't, let's don't screw up this state like the state you just moved from because you couldn't, you know, live well or have a good job or, or pay too much taxes. Let's, let's kind of learn from where we came from, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, so I'm just going to call it the invasion from the North. I mean, it's not all North. Of course, there's a lot of West coast, um, coming here. And like I said, as long as you vote right and you're patriotic and you pay your taxes, we're fine with people coming here. We want good people here, you know, of all stripes. It doesn't matter. Um, but with the invasion from, from the north, and there's that's a whole nother host of issues on its own, but then we're going to add the, the horde of illegals that are now on the way here and that are already here. So we're sort of being invaded from, from both top and bottom here, and that's a problem. It's a problem in so many different ways. It's a problem politically because we know how these folks are going to vote once they get here and somehow gain citizenship, which apparently is on the table. We know that they're bringing diseases. We know that they're bringing COVID. We know that they're not inoculated like we are. All right, We already know that. So a health crisis, a political crisis, a health crisis, economic impact to this state and the taxpayers that, that work and live here. And 
don't think that it's not going to impact you up north or east and west because they're eventually going to make their way, some of them, there. And there's already family there for them. And and this is really, uh, this is really a, a bad situation. The Border Patrol and ICE have effectively been neutered by the Biden administration by the stroke of a pen. And I'm wearing this hat with, you know, pride to support these men and women that do this job on a daily basis and uh, don't get a lot of damn thanks for doing what they do. And so I want to give a shout out to all the uh, all the border officers and ICE agents that, you know, are doing their best to keep us safe and try to keep the border under control and the, keeping the criminal element and the the sick out I'm telling you this is going to be a major problem and I'm not even saying that the people coming here are bad people or shouldn't be trying to better their lives but when we when we open the gates from the inside and invite these problems into our land that shows a lot of disrespect and, and I would say hate towards the people that live here, the like citizenry. Because old Joe and all his cronies in the Politburo, they don't have to worry about anything because they're covered. See, it's, you know, we the people, you know, the little people that get to deal with all the fallout. And again, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't see I don't see much of a alternate from that based on what I'm seeing on the ground. And, and look at the executive orders. They're building these tent cities down on the border and they can only hold them like a month. Then they have to turn them loose. So I sure as hell hope they're putting needles in their arms and giving them, you know, inoculations because economic impact is one thing, but when you turn loose a whole, you know, group of people coming through that are sick, I mean, we're screwed. I mean, it's just bad news all the way around. And, man, I, uh, I really hope I'm wrong, but th I don't feel it. I feel this is a bad situation and uh, it it really does concern me because a, a country that has no borders is truly not a country. It's just a swath of land, which open borders is something they're all about, you know, and the more... And, and let's don't kid ourselves, it is all about boats. And like Jesse Waters said today, I heard a snippet on it uh, on the radio, on the news, news talk radio today. Jesse Waters on Fox, you know, basically said the same thing that, you know, if if they get away with this, um, there'll probably never be another conservative president ever again. And that's exactly what they want. And we've talked about this. So, people, I'm going to tell you right now, don't let off the gas with preps. You keep prepping your butt off. Don't let off the gas. Do not hit the brakes. It's not a joke. Get those meds re-upped. Get those over-the-counter items that help you get through a sickness. Stack the food to the rafters, as a lot of people say. And uh, don't give up on those two A items either, because it's not a it's not a game. This the situation here in Texas and New Mexico and Arizona is a huge problem. So anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, please keep an eye on this and, and be up to speed on it. Keep communicating. Please let me know what your shelves look like. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know what your two A items are looking like wherever you're at, not without being too specific. Um, just kind of like to get a gauge on what things looking like out there. So with that, keep prepping, stack it deep, 
Long live the Republic.